Hello everyone and thank you for joining XR Room podcast. I'm your host Eddie Abel and XR Room podcast was designed with a singular vision and that is to shape, celebrate and showcase India's AR VR MR growth story and to help you understand about this transformational technology which holds potential to change the way we live, work and play. Happy to have with me Arnav Neel Ghosh, ex managing director of Blipper India and currently the director at Emerge Knowledge Labs. I wish you enjoyed this conversation. What's the story after uh, Blipper? Um it was very interesting because I think uh, uh when Blipper started um we were probably the first uh one of the first platforms AR platforms to uh to explore where AR is <laughs> and probably set the benchmark for uh for AR globally. Mm-hmm. Uh very few companies before us had gone ahead and uh kind of established a global platform that was mm-hmm. either so i think uh, largely uh the journey has been great uh and since uh post blipper um it's a very interesting market uh, especially the subcontinent and southeast asian market um when we started uh, we had uh, we were pretty much setting the benchmarks for uh, evangelizing what air is mm-hmm. uh social just social just happened in 2010 2009 so people were still grappling with digital marketing uh, and we started saying talking about ar um and i think the last in the last 7 years a lot of changes have happened um if, for a for a change there are uh, there have been a lot of players in the ecosystem uh, we really really felt uh, lonely at the top uh so there are a lot of players who kind of you know came in and doing very very well um the market has matured mm-hmm. um the the ecosystem has matured the infrastructure um has matured as well uh, not matured stabilized mm-hmm. um uh, so it's it's exciting times and and i think uh, you know uh, since uh, we we uh, when we were doing blipper we thought that uh, uh Blipper was probably probably ahead of its time um and that was one of the reasons we we struggled a bit mm-hmm. um but having said that uh these are very interesting times uh post blipper uh we're trying to now uh figure out um handhold and and really um kind of you know take uh relevant use of uh, what people call it xr today so what's the next step so what comes after blipper <laughs> um see the point is um see the idea was probably to kind of you know um, use my learnings from mm-hmm. building blipper mm-hmm. uh, and take it um and take it to the market mm-hmm. uh, help businesses mm-hmm. advise clients mm-hmm. um and i thought uh, the best way to do this is um uh is to probably join hands with uh with some like minded people who bring different skill sets because uh one of the largest um not largest really one of the problems that that i assume that is happening is um there are so many so many products and so many platforms and so many want to be so many me to in the market today right um everybody claims to be doing the same thing right uh everybody claims to be solving the same problem right uh what the difference is that uh maybe your your shell is different right you look different but at the back end or behind that shell you simply doing the same thing mm-hmm. right uh so i think there is a need for uh, and businesses get confused um because when whenever you talk to enterprises uh you know i hear two things saying that hey you know xr tech is been used for sales and training uh, and for remote assist um there is nothing much that is that is happening beyond apparently mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. but there's a whole host of things happening um uh, you know uh in terms of facial recognition uh in terms of uh, healthcare telemedicine uh education edtech right so i think uh, what i what i wanted to do was ideally um you know put uh as i said either open up my own consulting play mm-hmm. uh which would go 
and advise brands and businesses, um, be it B two B or B two C, uh, to navigate the world of XR, emerging tech, and basically help them to marry, uh, identify the problem, uh, upskill them, identify a problem in their business, um, and then marry the relevant tech to a problem, not. Throwing tech at them and saying, "Hey, you know, this is the tech that could be a magic wand," because what is happening in today's day and age is um, is tech by in the, by itself is galloping, mm -hmm. right? But the relevant use cases that you see of right. the of the early tech, as as we don't have relevant use cases of of uh, the early tech that has happened, right? So tech has moved ahead, right? So you have um, new form factor coming in head uh, in in VR. headsets um, you know new software tech coming in ar mobile ar as well but we just don't have relevant use cases right um, so so the challenge today uh, that i see is that can we create a platform uh, which which rationalizes what is happening right contextualizes a problem for the business and marry it with a relevant tech mm. now the tech could be that tech, tech could be anything and everything mm -hmm. right it could be ar it could be vr it could be mr it could be ai mm -hmm. uh make businesses future ready mm -hmm. right uh, but also the fact that uh, a lot of businesses that we have figured today um are are they don't have their they might have a mindset problem they may have a infrastructure problem or they are just not ready yet mm -hmm. right so even if i need to kind of tech a piece of tech which i think is going to solve the problem but they are not ready yet mm. right so for them idea is to prep them up mm. to a level where they are ready to integrate a certain amount of tech in their business so with that in mind and i think um tech as i said falls uh, becomes a part of the funnel it becomes a means to an end mm. and and um and because of that i felt that it is very essential that we offer uh, not only a tech consulting but we offer tech consulting as part of a large uh, consulting play mm. right which would include design thinking experience mm. design uh, creative storytelling mm. upskilling um also consulting as well mm. so hence i think post blipper uh, i was on the lookout for the right partners mm -hmm. and uh, and i think uh, about 2 months back um i joined hands with a firm uh, a group of people who i thought uh they do storytelling mm -hmm. they do enterprise uh, they do uh, venture uh, mm -hmm. uh, they do venture design mm -hmm. they do um uh, ips mm -hmm. uh, and i think that the entire uh, skill sets that that they bring into table mm -hmm. is is the right mix right. because i think that that actually has kind of you know helped us to create uh, a consulting platform called immerse knowledge labs Tell me, I mean, the the you mentioned future re ready business. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the the tech innovation or digital uh, is, is the key word at this point in time. You know, with the technology growing in such a way, do you think the traditional mindset is somewhere which is kind of like stopping these players from adopting, or, or is it the use cases which which is a problem? I think both are impediments. Mm -hmm. I think uh, if if you have the right mindset, mm -hmm. then you would obviously go and. take a risk mm -hmm. uh if you don't have the mindset you not even take a risk mm -hmm. um i think uh the reason we see a uh, lot of tech dying at a poc stage mm -hmm. is because people are not willing to take a risk mm -hmm. um people are saying hey um i have tried it but often a tech led business solution uh will only give you results if you if you keep it long term mm -hmm. right you just cannot have short term metrics Uh, which will you know evaluate a piece of tech mm -hmm. no uh and i think the integration play is is a large play mm -hmm. right um and i think as you as you uh and it really depends on what you're trying to deliver through that tech mm -hmm. right um and as as you rightly said uh mindset is a big problem but i think the mindset is a big problem because we generally as humans mm -hmm. right are we resist change mm -hmm. because when we get to a comfort level right we want to stay at that comfort level right, right? Uh, we generally a suspicious about a suspicious about anything new that is going to come in and disrupt mm. uh disrupt the way we are already comfortable in 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 leading our life 
right? And mm. probably in working process. Mm. Very few companies are adapting to change. But I think um, the key key areas where, you know, and, and I think when you talk about a lot of practitioners of emerging tech today in India, Southeast Asia, any other market you go to, mm. right? Um, even in the US, uh, you hear, uh, you know, uh, thought leaders and evangelists, they say, hey, you know, there are not many use cases that we see. Mm -hmm. There are not many businesses uh, which are which are pushing the envelope as far as extra tech is concerned uh, and emerging tech is concerned. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of enterprise uh, businesses which are using it uh, for their own internal uh, processes, right? But largely that is not enough. And I think one of the biggest challenges, um, it's, it's a question of uh, life cycle, uh, it's a question of mindset. So how do, you, how, do you, how do you attack that? You attack that by exposing them to the possibilities of what the tech can do for your business. Mm -hmm. The moment as an individual, you are, um, you are exposed to the basics of what the tech can do, then you obviously it opens up a lot of avenues in your own head about the problems that you face on a day-to-day -day level. So for you, it becomes easier mm -hmm. to assimilate that tech mm -hmm. and say, hey, you know, these are the five problems that I have and, and I think this is the way that tech can solve a problem. Because for practitioners or consulting a place like us, right, uh, we, would, we would try and understand and unlock value for your business. Mm -hmm. But uh, because you run, you know the business better than me and I, I know the tech, right, I'd be able to create a malleable tech better way if you are able to articulate your exact problem that you face. Mm. And your mindset will change if you are exposed to what the tech can do, mm. right? So I think it's more of a mindset problem. Uh, it's a top of the funnel. Mm. It's a mindset problem. And if the mindset problem gets sorted, then you see a whole host of use cases opening up, right? Mm. Uh, and it's a cultural thing. I mean. 45 to 50 percent of people that I talk to, mm. right, um, they are they resist change. They're mm. saying, you know, hey, this has worked for me, so I might as well kind of you know go with this. Mm. So, um, and I think the the uh, the uh, how do I say the frequency of people wanting to take risks in a business is very abysmal, right? Right. Um, so. Uh, so yeah, so that I think is 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 a challenge. I think it's a and when people marry ROI with risk, mm. right? ROI will always be a, a long term game, mm. right? Um, if you even if you and 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 tech play today, um, you cannot deliver ROI for any business today. Mm. Um, any, I mean, I don't know of any business where you can get ROI in one month or two months, right? Uh, so you need to give. Or t because to build that tech, it takes time, right? And you want to marry it with a certain solution that you imagine and which is going to give you an ROI and based on the ROI, you're going to invest further on the business, right? But you need to give that that use case or that POC some time to mature and give you the results, mm -hmm. right? The more time you give, right, the better results you will get. Mm -hmm. Obviously, at the end of the day, you know, some often... Uh, the, the key objectives that you outline for a POC, right, uh, or a pilot, you may not uh, get that, right? So that's the learning that we have, how maybe the approach was wrong, maybe the kind of solutions we were looking at was wrong, right? Maybe, so that's the learning we will have, and then we'll further improve on that and, and push for it. There are some organizations which push for it. Uh, but until unless you have, uh, a, a, you know, a dedicated risk-taking mindset, saying that whole, oh, I want to give this a time because, you know, the more time I give, the more results I'll see. Then you can decide, hey, you know, this will work for me or not. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, we just don't get that enough time. So, uh, A, do you think, is there, we, we're not giving it enough time? Is that a problem or lack of understanding it where you, you like a... I think, <clears throat> I think, uh, Eddie, the, the larger challenge is that um, you should understand that all tech is same, mm -hmm. right? It's 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 a commodity. Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, mm -hmm. um, how you use it, how do you contextualize to solve a problem? Mm -hmm. Is what makes one tech different from the other? Mm -hmm. uh, you go to markets like Singapore, uh, 
China and even in India, right? You see plethora of events focused on AI, blockchain, mm. uh, AR, VR, mm. uh, trade events, mm. right? And when you see them, you see thousands and thousands of people coming attending it. Mm. You say, wow, mm. right? It's it's a it it's it's really you know augurs well for the market because so many people are coming in. But the point is, uh, people will come in, uh, they will absorb it, and they will go away uh, without doing doing anything on it because they feel that end end of the day either uh, either uh, the guys who are coming in and get exposed to uh, exposed to the tech right. Um, or conversations about the tech that happens, uh, either they are not the decision makers, right? They they come here to, and what I the insight that I have is is that a lot of people who go to an event, uh, which is which is on emerging tech event, not all events, right? Uh, they go to fuel their own knowledge needs. Mm. Right? They say, oh, I want to go to the event because I want to be more knowledgeable. But how do I apply back to my work, mm. right? Uh, there is a big gap. So there's right? no implementation. It's just implementation is very, very. Mm. It's I haven't seen any direct correlation between a uh, uh, event that Taking has happened, or, right, yeah, yeah. and and it is translated into a mm. large scale uh, implementation. I think the challenge, the reason for this, I may be wrong, but my opinion is uh, is uh, is of the fact that there is always. You know, um, there is always this entire concept of of overburdening uh, a set of consumers, mm. a set of practitioners in the ecosystem, with too many jargons, right? Mm. Um, what we don't see, there are obviously a lot of there are some people who kind of you know come and explain what blockchain is, and exactly will say, hey, you know, uh, can I say, can I go to any blockchain event? And the moment I sign up for the event and say, hey, you know, I come from BFSI. Somebody says I come from Auto. So the moment I actually uh, get a sense of where my audience is coming from, coming from Auto or coming from BFSI, uh, if I do a quick kind of, you know, number crunching and say, hey, right, 30% uh, of my audience has come from the Auto sector, right? Then can I quickly give them? A use case of how blockchain could be used in auto, right? Give them a quick task. What are the outcomes for the guys who are coming in, mm. right? Um, networking is fine, right? Uh, people coming and mingling and getting to know each other is fine, right? But where, how do you define outcomes, uh, and how do you actually kind of you know uh, take that exp and take that and influence the ecosystem in a better way? Mm. Uh, a, our entire ecosystem is jargon-laden, mm -hmm. right? People uh, talk about, um, yeah, there, there are some fantastic use cases that has happened. Mm -hmm. Why we bandy around those use cases, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that when you bandy around great global use cases where AI was used or machine learning was used or NLP was used, um, where AR, VR, MR was used, mm -hmm. right, to solve a problem, mm -hmm. Um, we need to get more local. We need to say, hey, you know, if there is something that I'm doing an event in Bombay, do, have we seen any relevant examples of local use cases? If not, can I off the fly define some use cases, right? Or can I ask the audience as a practitioner of blockchain or AI, right? Saying that, hey, can somebody tell me, uh, you know, what is the business problem that you have, right? Can we do a discussions on how blockchain will be able to solve your problem, right? I think those, we are looking at outcomes, right? Because end of it today in the information economy or the knowledge economy today, right? If you want to know about blockchain, you spend half an hour, right? In reading and lo looking at videos, you'll get a fair idea of what blockchain can do. Mm. I don't have to go to an event to listen to somebody to get the same information back here. Mm. What I need is that, hey, you know, can I go to, go to a platform, articulate, and have an exchange information. Mm. I have a problem or I see a general problem with as a consumer. Can you as a practitioner of blockchain can tell me, right, how will I be able to solve it? Right? As in one as as a one to many, right? Because the usual thing people say, you know, let's take it offline. Mm. It's a it's consumption for the larger audience, mm. right? I think that okay. that is one way where you could uh, you could probably expand 
uh, expand a holistic uh, way of you know pushing down relevant knowledge people asked hey yes i think that's the way let me go back and let me see if i can actually uh, kind of you know solve my problem with the blockchain uh, product mm-hmm. now the point is uh, once somebody gets to understand a piece of tech right uh, they have two problems they say hey you know re- one is resistant to change mm-hmm. right second is i am not confident enough third is i think it's going to cost me a lot of money yeah. right and and fourth is oh even if it's cost even if i use it and put some money behind it i don't know what are my actual outcomes right so i am i'm not too sure these are the four and the and the large and the fifth is perception mm-hmm. right uh, i am happy to send 20 guys from my team to an advanced event or a course right those are different things i haven't seen a brand or a business sending in a bunch of their decision makers saying that oh, go and attend a workshop mm-hmm. right and come and implement that as part of uh, as part of your kpi mm-hmm. make emerging tech as part of your key kpi for next two quarters mm-hmm. right i think there is there has to be so information is there mm-hmm. there are practitioners so yeah. i think i think one one more thing that i think as as an ecosystem part of the ecosystem mm-hmm. right both me and you are part of mm-hmm. the same ecosystem right i think it's it's our it's our duty and need mm-hmm. right uh, to drill down a very contextual uh, knowledge mm-hmm. to people who are not part of the ecosystem right when we talk to relevant people within in our ecosystem we feel hey you know a lot of people know about it mm-hmm. when when you do podcasts with practitioners of xr or ai or computer vision or whoever comes in right you feel hey great job they may be doing some great job right but i would rather want to know from them what they are doing to expand their pro- their thought process beyond their product what they do right and influencing more people right not to use their solution so when you keep the sales out for a bit right saying that hey you know don't go and sell your product right try and understand and find a solution and then see if your product fits into the solution or not mm-hmm. otherwise can you get them to think differently for using a tech solution i think that's that is thinking problem right, right? right so i think i think therein lies this entire uh, thing of how we as practitioners we need to change the way mm-hmm. right we go and uh, we do, we go and talk about our craft to to an audience who doesn't know mm-hmm. right because 85% of the audience will be interested if you are able to solve their problem they they are their key takeaways are hey i am confident saying that i have a problem i might be using not not my blockchain product or not my product but i i am confident of using a tech which i which i thought was oh is impossible to integrate mm-hmm. i don't know what the outcomes would be but now i am confident that let me give it a shot so how many outcomes can i generate from a conversation like that is probably something that i would look at mm-hmm. right uh I think that's that's a big area of concern. Uh second area obviously, right as you said, uh is is that we are a jargon driven economy. Mm-hmm. Right? We throw in a lot of words, we throw in a lot of um a lot of line sentences which sounds great, right? A lot of examples that we can throw around mm-hmm. of a great use case that we see from from uh, from the US or from Europe or from Asia. uh you know how ai was implemented or how ar vr was implemented fantastic use cases right but those are reference points right i would rather see a great use case but i would also rather kind of go back and see how it was it made how did this use case solve a problem right what are the outcomes right one is an outcome and what led to creation of that use case right i i would rather much focus on that because once i focus on that then it's easier for me to influence and inspire people to build a similar use case right not on similar lines but how a tech has been used to build a use case and i think that is one of the reason right when we have joined hands to build immersive knowledge labs is basically to take that out to people right who are averse to tech who are who are resistant to change uh who are who have a perceptual problem right who wants to do it but they're not sure who to talk to uh, to hold their hands uh, 
create a framework for them identify help them to identify a problem mm. and then help them to marry a relevant tech mm. right uh, because i think i think that's what we are set out to do right right lovely yeah i think i mean it's interesting times and uh, you, you rightfully mentioned i mean most of these events uh, it's largely uh, jargon led there, there are yeah. a lot of these people who come and throw these jargons and they take these information bits of information which is freely available over the net or they go to these international events and it's, it's largely jargon led and, and, and then peop, largely people come for networking Yeah. Right? So these information which which you rightfully mentioned, if if you go to such kind of event, when you take the information, eventually if you kind of curious enough to figure out, okay, okay, this is a a problem which I can solve with the information that I've taken and I can Im- actually implement is, is where I think things will really change, not just for the individual as as well as the company. So tell me more about uh, Emerge Knowledge Labs. You know, so what I- is the plan ahead? I think. Um the idea of emerge knowledge labs edi is um you are also a, a part of emerge knowledge labs and the, i think the idea that we have come together mm. is is basically to break down the walls mm. of of um uh, of perception mm. um you know uh, create a more focused um opportunities for businesses mm. uh not approach or segregate businesses driven by their value or their budget mm. right uh we are the emerge knowledge labs is is yeah we are here to obviously um uh, it's a business it's it's a, it's it's profession that we are in to make money mm. right but i think more than making money it's about uh is about you know influencing the ecosystem uh, uh right uh, how do i say right structure it mm. in a way where uh you know we take uh, relevant tech to relevant businesses um or rather i would say that of whatever we are doing with emerge knowledge labs uh as a as a platform is is to empower businesses uh to to make the right decisions of using the right tech to solve their problems right, right? um now depending on what stage they are in they may not have uh they 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 are they may have a problem but they're not aware of what to do with the problem so there we come in and they may have a design problem they may not have a tech problem so we go and help solve it right um they may have they may have everything but they may have a challenge with which hardware to use mm-hmm. they they don't know right mm-hmm. so we have we consult them and mm-hmm. and help them to identify the right hardware for their for their business they they might want to build something from scratch mm. right so we'll custom build it for them mm. um and they might want a training done to upskill their employees mm. we'll go and upskill them as well um they might want to uh you know um they might want to have a managed service model where they want a practitioner of certain tech uh sitting out of their office uh, managing their entire you know entire um enter delivery enter strategy right we will train and equip and empower somebody to go and sit in 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 an in an enterprise uh because largely if you see uh we have we have just only scraped the surface right right from uh you know going to a college or going to a school and and telling them hey right this is the way you can uh create more i mean everybody knows um uh using interactive um uh, interactive books you can you know use a simple ar image recognition a character comes alive right it's is it has become passe right if you talk to a lot of people it becomes passe they say oh you know we have there is this is actually bottom of the funnel people have moved on but unfortunately it is not if you go and go to any school any bmc school today right mm-hmm. uh they have they need such kind of uh you know uh, how do i call it cognitive learning process visual learning process right uh they are not aware we we may think that they are aware that this is possible but it is not possible right so if you can bring it on scale create interactive platforms like that on scale because it is not about downloads at the end of the day downloads is a consumer term right because uh when we were running blipper a lot of businesses came and said oh how much how many how much is your download we said we are not a reach platform right we are a platform which and gives a new form of engagement to your audience 
right and we talk to your audience we are not bringing in external audience train them on the brand and and they may not stick there right so we are talking to an audience which is already yours right we have moved away from that conversation but if you're talking of education and healthcare right then downloads doesn't become the the defining factor right people will need to engage with a healthcare platform with 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 a hospital right if you're able to add value to them through a certain channel they'll be happy to we call it value exchange right happy to kind of you know download it and use it right there has to be one trigger for them to use it so i think what we call passe and bottom of the funnel and saying it has moved on and oh it's a simple image recognition has got a lot of value right so us as image knowledge labs we want to tap on those values right and say hey can we bring something at scale right so so we are trying to im- impact change at a level which is going to kind of impact change we're not impacting change uh, ju- just ju- by putting on a powerpoint and saying hey you know we are here to impact change no our change starts there mm-hmm. can we empower millions of school going kids mm-hmm. right um uh who don't have phones right uh the the municipal schools will have will have all you need is an interactive machine mm-hmm. right and which can deliver that content right there are enough and more people who are ready to do it right obviously when you do business at scale you will get profits there are profit and loss is going to happen but if you see the larger value impact we creating that's where into create impact uh go to healthcare go to telemedicine right i think those are the areas you can really impact change there are a lot of people mm. are trying and doing some great work mm. so our focus is uh, as emerge knowledge labs is open the doors to anybody and everybody who needs uh, you know hand holding who needs to identify problem mm. uh, right uh, but the idea for us to exist right is is mar- is basically marry uh, tech make it more convenient more co- contextual more relevant uh and and break down those barriers right the mental barriers for anybody who is a practitioner or a brand owner or a business owner mm. to to mental barriers to and guide them how to use those tech right i right, completely yeah. so yeah you said i mean that, that you gave the example of education healthcare and um ar vr mr personally i mean since i have invested in, uh, in it since 2016 uh i know that we we are the cusp of uh, jumping out from the 2d medium and getting into the 3d medium now w- how do you see this uh panning out from from us as uh, we've been restricted to the 2d medium right so far everything that we uh, yeah. use yeah. Or, uh, is your phone or your theater or television or or uh, or computer it's all 2d medium but yeah. now we're the cusp of spatial computing where we're going to jump out So, what are your views on that, and what's largely uh, pulling back the adoption of uh, AR, VR, MR in the country? I think, I think it's a mindset thing, really, Eddie. I mean, mm-hmm. I cannot, um, I cannot blame it on perception. Mm-hmm. Any, I cannot blame it on, oh, we don't have the right handsets, mm-hmm. or we don't have the right bandwidth, um, we don't have the right content play. Mm-hmm. I think. Um, I think it's a perception problem. Mm. It's a mindset problem. People think it's been, it's very expensive. Mm. People still think that the value mm. of how how it impacts is not demonstrated well enough, right? Uh the metrics that come into play, the way you evaluate a a, a business case of a new tech, right? And the metrics that you use for them and the metrics that you use for your regular businesses, right? They feel the metrics are not powerful enough. right are we not giving enough time to these new techs because I, most I, of these techs are so powerful I think it, it's going to come to a point where it's not just going to impact us but possibly disrupt us is something which i don't think i we, think we um i think it is uh, at a certain level mm-hmm. it is it is um it will disrupt right but i won't really uh, i i would say that um there are a lot of challenges um for example when we are in the industry we know a lot of 3d renderers which would kind of you know uh, convert 2d at scale right but a lot of other people who really 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 want to do it they don't know how to do it right they are not empowered enough how to do it right 
maybe what what we have done is um you know uh, i think what uh, during immersion uh i'm forgetting his name the guy who was country head of substance so i don't <laughs> say that every business going forward will need to have a 3d strategy right, right? i think it's very relevant yeah. but what my take on it is having a 3d strategy is fine but what are you doing to get them implement that 3d strategy mm. how are you influencing that uh can i empower somebody uh, a business owner right because i think the the strategy going forward for content creation uh, not media and entertainment uh, not a studio but an average joe who wants to get into ar vr has a business right um, a hospital uh, education institute right it is not possible for the platform owner to always go and create bespoke content for him mm. right so i think the larger strategy is can i empower right uh, the owners themselves or the ecosystem that they are in right can i empower the industry ecosystem to with tools to help them to create their own 3d content right when we go and talk to a client we'll say hey you know i don't have uh, you're creating a simulation model for say a shipping industry right they have a problem they're saying hey you know every sailor who comes on board uh, we have a simulation that they do on ground but we would like to do a simulation on vr but even if you want to do simulation on vr you need certain input certain data points which you need for that to create that simulation right now uh, we say hey, you don't have that or you know we we until unless you have that we won't be able to help you but can i have a tool because it's a progressive thing i mean if i if they really need to solve it uh, probably we will help them to kind of create the data and feed it into a system which allows them to render a 3d model uh, but otherwise i know f- for sure that there are a lot of tools uh, in the e-commerce space right i'm forgetting the name of the platform but uh, their only business is that anything any product or any seller wants to list any product in amazon or flipkart or um or um chromas of the world right they actually go through a 360 degree view mm-hmm. right you see a 360 degree view of the product right any product that gets hosted on in on 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 the sites so but invariably what they do is they go through the iteration mm-hmm. right somebody is given that data somebody at the back end kind of converts the data right into a 3d or a 360 degree viewable data or a 2.5d and hosts is there mm-hmm. right eventually if you have you fit a large enterprise and if you have a lot of content then it then it makes sense for somebody to kind of you know as i said manage service right the job is to take all data convert into 3d and put it but not all businesses will have that volume right mm-hmm. but they have the potential to grow and 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 grow into a large business right for me the opportunity is take the take the agency world for for that matter right they would come and tell us hey you know we don't have the content can you create content for us right when i was to run blipper 80% of the agency was will say hey you know uh, obviously there is a the timing problem they'll say oh the pitch is tomorrow can you create something so they have no idea the effort that goes into creating mm-hmm. that second when we move to a saas model saying that hey we have a tool which will allow you to create content they were not very they not very keen to use that tool right so i think uh, the the first thing that we need to do is even for 3d or even for uh, not very very high end but can we break down creation of content right or 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 creation of i mean i will say content right now right and create tools which will make easier for any average guy to come in and create content right that will help to expand the ecosystem very number true. one right can i empower that so that is the empowerment that's going to happen right. right and depending on the business opportunity business size right uh, yeah there are various saas models that are coming to play mm. but depending on various uh, the saas models that we had in 2015 mm. and now is very powerful right right so there is there is web ai that has come in which will help which actually helps people to publish directly on the web but the propensity of uh, you know the the more filters and layers you remove from between the business owners and the product 
right and the more human intervention you remove and empower them to create that content right will automatically scale things up mm-hmm. right yeah obviously if you are a business you need to create your uh, license packages accordingly you need to create uh, you know different models on saas right but that's a different thing that can also be worked out mm-hmm. but can i as a business create a tool right which will empower mm-hmm. and easier for anybody to render a 3d content right and they don't have to come uh, to us and saying hey you know but yeah as i said if it's a volume led business if it's a it's an ecom platform which has a lot of content is a lot of listing and we need to keep on churning out uh, you know 3d models every day and host it then it makes sense for for us to kind of pick it up uh probably and and do it as a managed service right those models can be worked out but largely i think from a vision point of view if you really need to scale and tackle this problem right then you need to empower people right, right? i think that's that's the key for me lovely or a note to end thank you anand it was a pleasure talking to you absolutely Eddie. and uh, i i personally took so much from this conversation and last words uh, the hunger for uh, the hunger to know more right, the hunger right. to curiosity uh, yeah right. i mean you need to go beyond your call of duty right, right. completely and yeah that's that's what keeps on driving us yeah. so um, if you like what you see please press the subscribe button i'm going to have all the details down of uh, arnav neel go so in case if you want to get in touch with him please feel free because that's what this platform is all about it's about building a community and getting in touch and helping each other and grow the ecosystem that's what's all about and until next time see you guys bye bye yeah